The third generation of Ford Explorers, model years 2002 through 2005, have a defect in the rear window that can cause Explorer owners a bit of a headache. I recently had one of these in my shop that needed a budget fix, so I thought I'd share uh, how I went about it. The rear hatch glass has a plastic bit of trim along the bottom, which is adhered to the glass with a urethane of some sort. The trim is prone to cracking, and by prone, I mean at this point, nearly every single third-gen Explorer in the world has a cracked rear window panel. You can see in this picture, the panel is cracked to the right of the Ford emblem. The panel can be purchased from Ford and painted to match, or you can buy a pre-painted panel from Dorman for just a little more than $100. The Explorers in my shop, though, had a more advanced problem. Once that crack is developed, water will begin to collect inside that panel. At the bottom of that panel is a striker for the hatch, and it's made of ordinary steel. Steel plus water plus time equals rust, and the one in my shop had rusted through the studs that kept the striker plate attached to the glass. This meant that the hatch glass would open of its own volition, and the door jar light would be triggering constantly since the striker wasn't solidly engaged to, well, anything. The proper fix would be to remove the crack trim, purchase a new mounting bracket, install that bracket, install the trim, and call it a day. As far as I can determine, however, that bracket is not available except as a part of the assembly that includes the hatch glass. Any junkyard part will have that crack, so even if I got a used part, I'd still have the danger the bracket could be rusting, and I would need to seal up the crack or replace the trim panel. All of that would entail a significant amount of labor and cost, and on a nearly 20-year-old truck with over 200,000 miles and some rust holes, just doesn't seem worth it. In order to go ahead and fix this, I've gone ahead and cut open the back panel, um, just in the section where that bracket is going to lie. So you can see I've masked it up with some tape, and uh, just kind of cut it with a Dremel or an angle grinder, and that is the nastiness that used to be that bracket. And you can see all of that just kind of coming apart now, um, and it's it's just terrible inside there. So that bracket was totally destroyed. So um, now that that's all taken out, we can go ahead and try to fix it. So in order to make the new backing plate, I wanted to first start with the uh, a piece of metal. So I've got just some. Plain old mild steel here, uh, it's either 16 or 18 gauge, nothing too special. Uh, used this, so this is the piece of plastic that uh, basically buffers the metal from the glass in the original configuration. So this came out, obviously it's dirty, but it's not damaged, right, because it's plastic, so I'll clean it up before I put it back in. But then uh, I used that to size out this. So this here, will go in there. And then I've marked where I'm going to put my studs through right there and there. And so that way I will have um, a brand new vacuum plate that can sit on. You can see here I've gotten into the um, area and cleaned it out, used a little bit of compressed air to get all the moisture out uh, and to uh, get all the little particles out. So looking much cleaner now. You can see here where the actual crack has developed uh, over time. So again, this is a 2003, so it's had uh, 18 years to go ahead and build this crack. And all along here is where the moisture has been getting in and causing that to rust out. This panel is basically beyond saving at this point. All right, so I have the bracket off the car. This little tab right there, you can see. That tab gets bent up and it'll slide off of the uh, wiper motor. So once you have it off, we have these. So these were originally permanently attached to what is now just a pile of rust. You can see it operated like this. Where that was a stud welded onto that, I assume. Uh, hard to tell now. And then this very, very large uh, bolt, or I'm sorry, this very, very large nut kind of kept it on there. There's one on the other side. You can see that's pretty well demolished. So we're just going to, no, I'm not going to try to save that. I, I might be able to with heat and penetrating oil and get that off, but it's really not worth the time. So basically you just uh, you need a wrench to get those started. But once you get those started, that comes off, that comes apart, and now you have that. So what we're going to do is take a little trip to the hardware store. And back from the hardware store, I have a couple M6 bolts uh, that I got um, right there, uh, a couple M6 nuts that I picked up, and then a handful of fender washers, uh, all for about $2. Went with just regular um, hardware, not stainless, 
And those fender washers are the right size on the exterior. However, they're SAE size, not metric. So they will need to have a little hole drilled in them uh, for them to fit. I'm going to run the bolts through that backing plate. I'll weld those on and we will have this bracket after a little bit of paint. So those are just welded in place, just kind of tacked to hold them in. Now on the other side, it's very important that you have the order correct. So you have the little plastic piece that goes up against the glass and then you'll have that striker that goes in there and then you have the little metal bracket that holds the, uh, the motor and everything for the windshield wiper. Um, also check which angle you have your striker facing uh, in addition. So once those are on, and be careful when you attach them, you don't want to crack the glass as you uh, tighten those down, but once those uh, nuts are tightened, then you can go ahead and put that plate on and then run those bolts on right there. A little bit of zipping on in. Now with these, you want to be very careful. I want to be really careful with those. If I over tighten that, I could crack the glass and we certainly don't want that. So I'm going to switch over now to just a regular uh, a hand ratchet and get that done. All right, and now it's latched into place and it's mostly lined up. Now I've got the hinges off at the top, so it's not completely lined up. As a hint, if you're going to take and loose the hinges, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you also take off the uh, hatch struts as well. Uh, if you don't, it uh, it's going to fight you pretty hard. Um, if you're having a hard time trying to close this, and it will not close, it will not close, uh, and it kind of is bouncing off the latch, the latch may have re uh, uh, what would you say re uh, uh, reclosed. So just come down and pop the latch with the button to open it up. If you've got this and it's just, it's like uh, uh, a huge gap on either this side or, or on this side, just, I mean, just a giant gap, like you could almost stick your hand in it. Um, what you've done uh, is you have put the, um, the, the pieces back together in the wrong order. So remember, you got to put your, uh, working from the outside, you start with your plastic and then your new striker panel. And then on the inside, you have the plastic piece, then you have the striker bracket, and then you have the uh, bracket that holds the uh, um, the, the uh, wiper motor uh, and all that. And then you put your fender washers and your bolts on, uh, your nuts on. Um, if you do that in the wrong order, the striker will stick out too far and this will not, it'll latch, but it, it'll be sticking out. It, it won't go deep enough. And so it, it will not seal correctly. And it, you'll spend a little bit of time trying to figure out, you know, what, what have I done wrong? That's what you've done wrong. So um, also... In the meantime, the other thing that I've done, and I can go ahead and take this tape off, while I was working on all of that, I got in here and kind of corrected this a little bit. I'm using, uh, honestly, I'm just using a little construction adhesive. And I've gone in there. Uh, it's stuff I've used before uh, for some other things. Uh, it's pretty strong. It's a, um, a DAP product. And so now uh, I clamped this down. I clamped it by uh, uh, basically just uh, leaning a... Um, a piece of angle iron up against it. This is the main reason all that uh, tape was on there. So the angle iron kind of hold that in place, kept that on there uh, so that that got glued down. Um, basically calls for about four hours to fully cure. I'm going to work with it a little bit before that. So what we're going to wind up doing, I'm going to finish this job up. I've got to get these hinges back on. No big deal. Put the struts back on and so that this is all good. And then we're going to go ahead and fill this with some adhesive to close that up. We'll use a little uh, latex caulk to uh, seal up these uh, cracks, and then we'll cover the whole thing in a small piece of vinyl wrap. All right, now, these hinges are in place right here. Uh, by the way, if you notice this tape, I put this on here so that as I'm loosening everything and moving it up and down, this doesn't come up and uh, you know scratch the paint or anything like that. So just a little quick painter's tape. Also do the same thing right here. Keeps this, if, it gonna, uh, if that latch were to slide down or something, it'll keep it from uh, damaging the paint of the car. So uh, definitely a good thing to do. But at any rate, so these are nice and solid. Those are on there real well. And when I pop that, All right, the hatch opens. It's really hard to open right now because I don't have the the assist things on, but we'll let it down and we don't want to slam it. Bring it down 
and boom, it slips right into place. And we're lined up, we're lined up. Gap's about the same on both sides. So we are we are good to go. So now uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the trim back on on the inside. And we are almost to the point where we can go ahead and seal this up and vinyl wrap it. All right, so I've gone ahead and taken this off the rest of the way. And I hit it with a file uh, so that nothing sticks up on it. And so that'll sit right on there. Um, now I could try to get all of this off. I'm just going to go ahead and cover that in the vinyl. I'm going to put the emblem on on top of it anyway, uh, on top of the vinyl. So, I mean, realistically, the best way to do it really would be to go ahead and get all that out, have it nice and flat, and then the uh, emblem would sit on there. But I just, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through that. This is pretty nasty old adhesive. It doesn't come off real easily, uh, and I'm just not going to go through the time to do it for this. Uh, but, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on this and clamp it down. Uh, we'll put some adhesive on this and clamp it down, and then we'll come back in a little bit to put the uh, the silicone around. All right, I've got my Dynagrip on there, kind of gooped up. I've put a lot on there, a lot more than I ordinarily would really want to, mainly because I need this to kind of stick up a little bit in some areas. Um because there's not really a lot of support up in this uh, spot up in here. Uh, the main support's down here. So now that it's on, I'm going to go ahead and get that good and clamped up, and we'll let it sit. All right, so I've now taken uh, some um, denatured alcohol and wiped that down. Uh, you can see the, um, the clock that's there, the quick seal or uh, uh, whatever. Kind of fills all that in. Again, it's not perfect. Um, some of this is going to show through uh, the vinyl. Um, it, you know, it's just not, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but uh, again, you know, we're talking about a 20, almost 20 year old truck here. So, um, you know, really the right thing to do would be take this panel off and put a painted panel on. Uh, but the, um, you know, the owner doesn't want to do that. So we're, uh, we're just doing something else, making it look as, uh, as good as we can. So the next step is to go ahead and get the vinyl and, uh, and start applying it. Applying the vinyl works pretty much like uh, any other vinyl wrap job. Uh, didn't necessarily want to cover it here, but basically, uh, now that the vinyl's on, uh, basically completes the repair for the uh, for the vehicle. Uh, you can see that it's not perfect. You can uh, I didn't spend a lot of time getting the transitions all smoothed out or using any body filler or anything like that. Uh, so really, in the end, it, it worked out to be a relatively rough-looking repair. But again, this is a 18-year-old vehicle. We're trying to keep it roadworthy, keep it on the street, um, and not spend a lot of money to do so. So um, very successful repair between the Quixie and the vinyl. That'll kind of keep all the crud out of there, all the moisture out, um, and that new bracket will uh, last. You know, I would say at least as long as the vehicle has lasted so far. So hopefully if you have this problem, you can do something very similar on your own Explorer, uh, repair that latch, and um, you know maybe uh, improve the look of the back of it uh, a little bit while you're at it.